Hi everyone. Um, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the Bessemer's loss model, which is one of the um, most basic, but at the same time, fundamental models in optimal execution. Um, this is a discrete time model, um, so we're going to have, uh, you know, um, the, the the time slices are going to be equally spaced, um, at least in this uh, first example. Um, and the, the problem is <clears throat> the following. So we need to buy or sell. We, we look at buy orders because they're easier to visualize, but then the sell orders will be the same. So we need to buy or sell a number of units of, think of it as stock or a futures. Um, and we have an initial time which we're gonna set at zero and a final time, which is capital T. So the question is, how do we slice this order <clears throat> so to minimize some objective function which we are gonna go into? Um, uh, in terms of notation, I'm gonna call x t uh, the number of standing units at a little time t, and x zero is gonna be you know, this quantity. Think of it like hundred units, whatever it doesn't matter. And x capital t needs to be zero. So that's just to say that we have a constraint. We need to finish by capital t our execution. <clears throat> so here the issue is the following: so large purchases or sale of a given asset, unlike, you know, what you assume, say, Black and Scholes theory, for example, are going to move the market, they're not going to move the market against you. Um, so, um, it's particularly if you were to execute everything at once, you're probably going to end up eating all the liquidity if the order, order is very large. So, you're going to end up um, sort of taking all the, um, um, <clears throat> let's say, the quantities which are offered in the market, and as a consequence, you're going to end up paying more. Um, so how do we go about selecting you know, this quantity, the changes in the amount we need to execute? So this is number of shindings there at time t, so in think, think of it of a discrete interval. How do we slide this quantity um, so that we minimize the impact? So here I have a minus sign because this goes from you know, positive number to zero, um, so minus the XT is the actual quantity, say 20, 30, whatever you're going to be executing in each interval, um, DT. Um, and also, what do we mean by uh, market impact to start with, um, which is this sort of adverse uh, movement of prices in the direction of where we are executing. Um, and also, I mean, here is a more general question. What, what is our objective? Do we want to minimize the expected cost? Um, do we care about variance um, of our execution? So maybe on average we do really well, but sometimes we do extremely well, sometimes we do extremely badly. And if we do extremely badly, we may have adverse consequences. Um, so just to fix ideas in this lecture, we're going to look at two types of market impact um, um, two basic types actually there are more general types which we're gonna uh, talk about in future lectures but um, one is the permanent impact uh, you execute and your execution somehow stays in the prices forever of course it's an idealized um, uh, concept here but there, there are elements of this in real execution and a temporary impact and um, in particular this this is a sort of an instantaneous impact. So we execute, we have an impact, adverse impact in the market, and then as soon as we finish the execution, the market, um, let's say, comes back, the price comes back uh, to where it would have been if we didn't execute. Um, we're gonna go into details of this, this concept, but you know, just bear in mind, we're gonna have these two um, extremes. Um, so as I was mentioning, temporary impact affects only the price of our transaction, uh, but a non long lasting effect, whereas permanent impact is going to have an effect on the market and uh, is going to stay there forever. Um, nothing is forever, but we'll see in what sense. Um, so, as I was mentioning in the beginning, we're going to analyze the problem in a discrete time cell settings. And it turns out that this problem can be formulated in the language of dynamic programming. Um, and we can get actually, you know, quite simply uh, the optimal solution, although it's not obvious at the very beginning what the optimal solution is when we formulate the problem. But it turns out that there is a simple solution. Um, actually, this gives us a nice connection um, to some technique in, um, let's call it approximate dynamic programming of, 
for reinforcement learning, which we're going to be looking at at the end of the course in the sort of more advanced and more innovative part um, of this lecture. But we need to start from, from you know, the basics. So time X capital T, um, we have a certain number of sending units. So imagine you start with the X0 equal 100, then X1 is going to be you know, 18, then X2 is going to be 70, um, and the change in XT is what we, you know, want to solve for, or equivalent to want to solve on what's the optimal amount outstanding we need to have at any point in time, knowing that by the time we get to capital T, uh, we need to be at zero, okay? So these are the constraints I was mentioning before. Um, for notational convenience, we in gonna um, denote by dvt uh, the number of units which are gonna be executed at any point in time. So we start at time zero and we actually finish at time t, capital T minus one, um, and dvt, um, you can see the interval, and dvt, as you can see, um, is simply the change between what we had to execute at the previous time, time minus the amount left to execute you know um, at the following time with the minus sign in front because this is sort of this decreasing function and f function and dvt um, is going to be a sort of positive point in this sense so we start very simple with a model of permanent impact and um, so each execution we're going to have an impact which is going to last forever. Um, so if you think in terms of the old book, um, we sort of mentioned it earlier, and we're going to come back to this concept of old book um, over and over again. But um, imagine that you go into the market, you take out some quantity you buy. So you buy from somebody um, and you know, this quantity in a way never comes back. Of course, we have randomness, we'll see. So there are going to be other events which are going to move the price up and down. But um, in a way, we sort of move the market in a certain direction and we have an impact which keeps lasting over time. Okay. Um, so the asset dynamic will be modeled as follows. So think of it as a, again, a stock or a future contract, if you prefer, it could be any asset. Um, you know, the current price is the price we had at the previous time. Um, the last bit is the sigma um, S0 DW T minus one. If you guys are familiar already with Brunian motion, uh, this would be the change in the Brunian motion over uh, the interval T minus one T. Uh, if you're not familiar with Brunian motion, think of it as a just random noise. So this is going to have a, an expectation of zero and variance of square root of delta t. Um, and sigma in this case is a percentage in which gets rescaled by the initial price. So this is a sort of volatility. Sigma S0 is a volatility in terms of you know, euros, dollars, whatever kind of currency you want to think of. Um, and so this is the noisy component. This is what we don't really model uh, in the market impact is what the impact of other people buying selling news or whatever and um, where we go about modeling um, the market impact is this theta delta vt minus one so delta vt minus one are the units uh, we want to uh, execute and theta is the um, market impact per uh, unit executed so say for example if we move the price by one cent every unit we execute and we execute 10 units, then the impact is going to be 10 cents. And you see the way this is formulated um, means that the impact is going to be felt in all future execution. And um, I think it's going to become clear when we're going to look at the instantaneous or temporary impact uh, because the formulation is going to be different. So it's going to be very clear um, why here we have a, a permanent impact, but you can already see because uh, if you had zero sort of noise, if this term was zero and you keep executing, you see that the price would be pushed up. So this is basically a drift adverse to what you're doing. So if you're buying, the price gets pushed up and you need to, you know, keep buying at um, uh, higher and higher um, prices. Okay. And as I was saying, the WT is you know, changing a brilliant motion. Think of it as a Gaussian noise. Okay. So, um, so what we need to solve for here um, is a sort of um, sequence of uh, um, quantities we want to execute. So these are our control variables. We decide 
not just what to execute in one go, but we could execute it in one go, but uh, generally we're going to do it over uh, over time. So what we're really choosing here is a series, or a vector, if you want, of uh, quantities which need to add up to x0, so the sum of these delta v's needs to add up to the total quantity we wanted to um, execute, um, and uh, we want to minimize the total cost of the execution so um this is quite simple so we we control the process this is not just one execution it's the full you know, um, um the full vector of execution of different uh, point in times quantities that we want to buy in this case um, and here is the cost of execution so each time t we decide to buy a certain number of units three four hundred one million um, and this is the price we pay. So um, you can think of it as we, you know, make our decision at time t, imagine time zero, and we get revealed what the price is at time one. We cannot do anything in between. It's it's a discrete time process, um, and uh, you know this price is going to be affected by our execution in a sort of deterministic way. Uh, but there is also a random um, component here which uh, comes from um, the market. I think we'll take uh, a little break here um, and we'll continue on the next uh, lecture.